You're just going to fillet this sucker right off the bone. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Fish Out Northwest, winning on Tommy Donlan. This is what you call a bait stop. Welcome to Fish Show Northwest, Winning England coming to you live from the Fish Show Northwest studio lo located here in Olympia, Washington. Uh, yes, you may have noticed already the chair is absent. Thomas Donlan is out for the evening, uh, taking a little recreational time, so you're stuck with me and uh, we're just going to get through it. Got a great show lined up, lots of guests lined up, lots of conversation, good topics on, on tap for this evening. So glad you could join me here tonight. Um, before I get too far along, if you're joining us here the first time on Root Sports, I want to thank you for tuning in and uh, sit back and enjoy. Uh, do us a favor, jump on over to our uh, webpage, www.fishhuntnw.com. There you're going to find a couple uh, useful items, the FHN20 coupon for edge rods. And please take advantage of this, especially if you are now shopping for a steelhead rod, say, for next season. You want to get your order in and uh, get those things while they're getting built and uh, save a tremendous amount of money. $2.95 on those new uh, Whittle rods, absolute bargain over there at Edge Rods. So 20% off all rods all the time uh, through FHN and the coupon FHN20. And of course, the uh, Phelps Game Calls. Phelps Game Calls is uh, joined on with us here at Fish Hunt Northwest. 10% off all calls all the time at Phelps. Uh, simply go to phelpsgamecalls.com and Utilize the Fish Hunt NW10 code for 10% off there. Uh, also, take some time, check out all our social media platforms Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Jump to our YouTube channel, uh, hit subscribe so you never miss any of our content we load up there. It's always uh, weekly, relevant, and uh, something you need to check out. Um, all right, along with that, now we got a few things going on. How about this weather? I mean, the weather this week has turned out absolutely amazing. We've got a couple more days of fantastic sunshine. Do I dare say maybe Saturday going to hit 60-ish, uh, 60, 60 plus degrees. Um, something to keep in mind, clam digs are coming back. We have, starting tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, we have digs out at uh, Twin Harbors and Capellas tomorrow night, uh, Friday the 17th, and then Saturday, um, March 18th, Mocrocs will open up. Uh, Twin Harbors on Friday. This is the first time this uh, this season now Twin Harbors is opening up. So finally, we're going to get some Twin Harbor dates. And literally, as I look at my schedule here, the 17th through the 20th, uh, evening digs. But that being said, you're probably out there before it gets dark. You actually are getting your dig going, get done before darkness falls. The uh, 21st and 22nd, probably finishing up right as it's getting dark. But... Just an outstanding week to get out there. I would take advantage of tomorrow and Saturday um, on those digs because we do have rain coming back. Uh, starting Sunday, I believe, and throughout the week, we got a pretty good system moving back in, but we got a couple of nice days on tap. So, all right, uh, take advantage of those if you can. Running down the show, we got a, we got a lot on tap here tonight. Uh, turkey prep part two, Dirk Durham with Phelps Game Calls. The bugler himself joins us to get you dialed in on box calls and slate calls. Looking forward to that. Patrick Gaffney, been a buddy of mine for a long time with Harbor Herring and owner of Gaffney's Guide Service. He's here to talk herring and get you ready for springer season, which is happening now. Uh, we also have a quick video we're gonna jump on uh, with and enjoy with uh, buddy Ben Overmars Jr. Deepwater Lingcott. This will get you pumped up for the coming season, no doubt. Uh, then we'll actually have an interview with Ben Overmars Jr., owner at Overkill Sport Fishing. Bottom Fish is open. We'll get a full report with Ben out of Westport and how it's going. Then we'll close out the show with some North of Falcon updates, multi-season tags, and things that you need to be paying attention to. So lots on tap there, moving the content around quite a bit. Um, 
Definitely, uh, definitely want to stay tuned because we have uh, a number of topics we're covering this evening. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind uh, relative to these clam digs, as it rolls around here into the 23rd through 26th, we finally get those morning digs. So if you can't get out this set here and take advantage of those daylight hours, holy smokes, the 23rd to the 26th, uh, perfect conditions, looks like the weather's going to be favorable. Got those digs going on in the morning. And then as we roll into April, we have something like 14 days already slated tentative for digs that'll be coming. So take advantage. If you haven't ever done the clam digging thing, you're missing out, something you need to take advantage of. All right, we are going to jump out for a quick break. We come back, we're going to get the bugler himself, Dirk Durham, on the show here. Going to walk you through some uh, turkey prep. Turkey season's right around the corner. Trying to get you guys, you know, all geared up and ready to go with a little bit of training uh, preseason. All right, don't go anywhere. Jump out for a quick break. We'll be back right here, Fish on Northwest. Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance Allied in Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you toward living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back to the show here, Dwayne England, Fish on Northwest, and holding patiently in the background, Dirk Durham, the bugler himself, joining us this evening here on the show to discuss uh, some turkey calls. Um, marketing manager for Phelps Game Calls, it's been a been a good relationship for you guys. How's it going, Dirk? Going great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for joining us. I know you guys are busy, and I'm glad you can take a little time this evening. So. Let's, uh, let's talk about a couple of things we didn't uh, get to with Jason last week. We initiated with some uh, locating calls, and then he walked us through some of the different options with some diaphragm calls. We're going to make it a little easier on folks tonight. Let's start off talking about some box calls and, and kind of, in my opinion, and I'd like to hear from you, is, is this one of the more easier calls to master when you want to start picking up turkey hunting as a, as a hobby? Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of the quintessential uh, item for the turkey hunters vest or pouch um, having a having a box call in there not only is it really easy you know if people struggle with diaphragm sometimes yeah. where a box call is very easy to use and um, and it just has a sound that, that reaches out and touches those turkeys some days when diaphragms aren't working um, the box call man it'll get them going yeah and uh, I know for certain at times when I've been hunting and pull out the box call like that like with Eric Brown and whatnot the winds picked up it's really making a lot of noise in the trees the uh, diaphragm's just not getting out there. You start scraping on that box call, and all of a sudden you get a you get a tom to respond to that. Them things they they carry a lot of volume, don't you think? Yeah, got a got a real sharp sound. Got a lot of volume, and you know, and it sounds it sounds like a turkey. You know, turkeys just really react to it. They love that thing. Yeah, you got one there with you tonight. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Phelps game calls version. We stock a couple different kinds. We've got the Phelps 
the Phelps version, and then we've got the meat eater style too. Right. Uh, only different, real differences is the woods, the same design, uh, just made out of a couple different woods, um, just aesthetics wise. And you know, we have something for the the meat eater lovers out there. Yeah. What kind of a call? What kind of a noise am I trying to make with that thing? Give me an example of what I'm what I'm utilizing that. Am I talking to the hens? Am I trying to draw the toms? What, am, what what's my communication level here? You're going to be trying to draw in the tom, and you're going to be doing some hen calls. So okay. you're going to sound like you're, first off, you're going to want to do some yelping. Yep. Very simple. Um, you can do some clucks. Um, you can do some purrs. And uh, you can even gobble with this thing, which most of the time turkey hunters don't want to be gobbling around that way you don't get shot. But sure. <laughs> uh, you can even gobble with these things a little bit. Yeah, that just that gives you a wide variety with just a simple box call. And like you said, they really do sound like a turkey. So, all right, moving along here, uh, you know, the slate call, the pot call comes up in conversation quite often. Now, when I go to the web, uh, the web page, the Phelps Game Calls web page there, I got an option here. I got crystal over slate. I got slate over glass. I even got aluminum uh, over glass. Kind of real quickly, tell us the difference in those types of calls and or what they're trying to achieve. Well, it's very nuanced on some of the sounds you're going to get out of them. For instance, um, probably the easiest to get sound out of is going to be your slate. It's going to give you a really nice, uh, smooth sound. It's really easy to, to make the sounds. You can do all the same sounds you can with the box call, but I think it's that next level of realism. It sounds a lot, uh, a lot better. Now, if that's the slate. Now, if you go with a, an aluminum call, mm -hmm. um, I always recommend that aluminum call if you're going to be out there in those windy kind, kind of days. It's just going to reach out and touch them a lot better. It's just a lot sharper sound, a lot louder. <laughs> but you can get quiet on it if you want. A little little trick you can do is you can set that. Typically, you want to run it out here on your fingertips, mm -hmm. but to get quiet, bring it down here to your palm and just kind of let it set in your palm. Kind of dampen it a little, huh? Yeah. You can get a lot really, really quiet with it. And, you know, like the crystal over slate or crystal over Paduk, um, you know, you're just going to have a little different nuance type sound. You know, it's going to have a little different tone, a little more texture, a little different texture. Yeah. When it comes to creating those different sounds with the slate or the aluminum and I, obviously as you showed you can dampen that noise by putting it down in the palm of your hand a little bit absorbing some of that vibration is it uh, angle of striker or pressure on the striker to kind of get the different pitches or to be able to cluck versus uh, some of the other noises you were creating there it really is. It's really that angle and uh, and pressure both. And, you know, pick. we're all trained to pick up a pencil and write like this. So it's going to be kind of counterintuitive to a pencil. You're going to want to put your finger up there like a pencil, but then you're going to want to move it forward away from you and kind of tip it at an angle. And then you'll have some cross hash cross hatches on your slate or on your aluminum. You want to drag them straight across those cross hatches. If you have too much slant, you just won't make a noise. Oh, yeah. Start with making uh, some strikes here and then slowly rotate it up until you start getting that sound. Perfect. Well, never enough time, too many calls to get through, too many noises to try and master. Uh, folks can go to uh, Phelps Game Calls, even the webpage. You guys got some videos on there that gives demonstrations on how to's, do you not? Yeah, we do at the product at the product level on the product page. We have them, and then our YouTube channel too. We have a whole bunch of supporting videos that show you how to use the calls and what they're supposed to sound like. Absolutely. Whether it's Perfect. whether it's the calls or the diaphragm calls. Perfect. Well, appreciate you jumping on here tonight, Dirk. Like I said, we never have enough time, but uh, appreciate you taking a little time that we did have. And folks can go to Phelps. Uh, gamecalls.com they're going to get 10 percent off all calls for the rest of the year through FHN. So appreciate it, buddy. Good to talk, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Absolutely. Thank you. You're all right. Have a good night. You too. All right. Dirk Durham, the bugler himself, marketing manager for Phelps Game Calls. Uh, check out everything they got going on, either social media platforms or go directly to the website and get your calls ordered. All right. Good job out for a quick break. We come back. Patrick Gaffney with Harbor Herring 
things you need to learn about your hearing going into Springer season. Right after this break, right here, Fish Out Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge Thanks, aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied Boats will have it for you. Contact Allied Boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Welcome back to the show. If you were not aware, Springer season is actually upon us, albeit it's been kind of cold here the last couple of weeks. But uh, it is time to go Springer fishing. If you're going to go Springer fishing, you need some good quality bait. And I'm here to tell you some of the best bait I've ever fished uh, coming from Harbor Herring. Patrick Gaffney, owner at Gaffney's Guides Service, also with Harbor Herring, going to join us tonight, talk a little bit about herring. How are you doing, Patrick? Good. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good, man. So, you know a thing or two about herring. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you spend a lot of time on the water harvesting them. Let's let's break that down real quick. Kind of talk a little bit to the people about what the process is for actually going out and getting herring until the final product's in the tray. Yeah, so typically we're fishing, you know, somewhere around uh, May through October, November, uh, just kind of weather dependent and all that. Um, it's pretty pretty simple process. You know, we go out nice, calm night, so we don't up and basically in a nutshell as i go looking around certain spots on certain tides and got a sonar and i find a school bait and i wrap my net around all the lumpara saying 200 foot net and i i wrap my net around the school of fish and and uh cinch up the bottom and bring them alongside the boat and and then we uh hand scoop them by hand into the into the belly of the boat and keep them alive mm -hmm. uh, circulating water and then it's we transport them to our net pens we dump them in there they sit around for a couple weeks and starve out so they're they're scale set and they get a little leaner stay better on the hook and then uh and then after that amount of time we we go out and process and it's uh you know we're doing two to three thousand dozen a day we're processing and freezing and traying up wow so really the key there is that starvation period really sets the scales because i gotta tell you when you unwrap the harbor herring out of uh, out of the package, the scales are firm, man. They are on there like glue. I don't know what you guys do, but they, they're just fantastic. I've yet to ever open a tray that doesn't yeah. to have quality. What what am I looking for when I go into the store? When I look at a tray of herring, what are some key things I want to stay stay away from? You know, you're in a good bait. You want to look for you know clear eyes. You know the centers of the eyes. They're they're like uh, frozen. You know they're clear whitish you know that means they haven't been thawed out they've been frozen really quickly um you know of course you want to look for your scales and you want to look you know for most salmon fisheries you want to look for a nice um slender bait you know it's not too pooched out too sure. fat in the 
you know, usually if you find that, that means it's they got a lot of feed in their stomach still or possibly spawn. So you just want that nice, you know, like aerodynamic looking bait, all their scales, clear eyes, no blood. No, you know, yellow tinge, that's, that's can be a, sometimes of, you know, bad freezing, uh, practices. Um, you know, the thing about, like you said, the scale thing, that's, that's two things. That's that starve time. And it's, you know, the handling, how, how the people who are actually physically touching each fish and putting it on the tray, you know, being careful and, and discarding fish that, that aren't, don't make the cut. Right. So uh, we're in springer season, so you guys got plenty of green label, and will you have red label coming up here in the near future? Yeah, yeah. Last couple of years, red label's been a little harder to catch, just hasn't been that that size class around. We've been getting a few, but they, you know, they're so popular, they sell so quick. So it's, I don't have any reds inventory right now. If you find some somewhere, you might want to think about buying them, but there's lots of greens. Um, we have lots of greens on the market. You know, I've heard some rumors of people saying other companies, you know, the fish are running too deep and they couldn't get to them. That that just isn't true. It's it was more of a lack of effort on 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 some people's parts, I think. So there's sure. there's a ton of greens on the market. Um, blues, if for those guys in the fall time or those ocean guys who want a bigger bait or bottom fish. Um, got a little bit of anchovies and and a few orange labels as well but those greens that's kind of the the staple so there's no no worries in that regard and we'll Perfect. expect it that smaller bait those red labels hopefully you know may june by then all right before we get out of here real quick you got some springer openings coming up some trips for people to jump in your boat uh how do they get a hold of you and how do they book a trip yeah yeah we'll be fishing between longview and woodland um 28th 29th 30th of march are still open for the columbia season uh my number is 253-432-1126 or uh, gaffneyfishing.com and just shoot me an email through my website perfect all right well great information as always harbor herring find it at uh numerous local retail outlets and uh, do yourself a favor, get yourself some Harbor Herring. You won't be disappointed. Patrick, thank you very much, buddy. We'll stay in touch and uh, have a great evening. All right, man. Thank you. You bet. Take care. All right, we are going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. You're going to watch a short video. Tommy and I out on the water with Ben Overmarsh Jr., who we'll speak to here shortly uh, later on the show. I want to show you something we did a season or so ago with him out chasing deep water lings. This is, uh, this is kind of a kick in the pants. Enjoy the video. And then we'll be back here in studio. Don't go anywhere. Quick break. We'll be back right after this. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors await you. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get Em Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge Rods. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy, nice fish. Beauty, gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, geez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. We're going to show you how to make fishing reels.
Oh, we're oh yeah. On. Nice. We are on. Yeah. It is time. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, Bendo. Rod tip to the water. Oh, oh head shaker. A deep color. Here it comes. That's a nice length. All right, there's one, boys. You got the leg? Oh, look at this guy. He's a oh, baby. Baby. Yeah, that's, that's on, nice. on. There we go, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There Woo! We go. Grab that leg. Yep, yep. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, here we go. Unhappy. Nice yeah. work, brother. Yeah. Right, buddy. Yeah, buddy. This way. Yeah, he's got mono. Uh, Very clear. Here I come. Like it's a stream up. Oh, is he taking a line? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh baby. Nice. Oh. Hey, one step to your left. What is it? What is it? Real deal. Oh. oh. Got him. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Hey, you got a little size we Wait. want. Right there. Yeah. Hey. We are on. Yeah, we're working this deal. Bendo. I got, I got top shot. Woo! I got top shot. Top shot. There he is. Here I come. Oh, we got, oh, we got a dinosaur. We got a dinosaur. Oh, it was a dinosaur. Oh, Get him. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Over the rail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Make it up for your other one. Woo. Boom. Yeah, that's a Lincoln, baby, right Look there. Whoa! Oh. Felt like we uh, got picked up. I'm just going to leave it there. If I need to, I'm going to free school just a little, give him some line. Let that Lincoln really take it. Let him sit there and chew on it with no resistance. Yeah, he let it go. Bait's probably still good. I'm just reeling up slow now and waiting for that rod to load up. If it doesn't load up, I'm going to free school back to bottom. Let that weight hit on the bottom for a minute. Oh, that was a pop. There we go. There we go. Free spool, free spool. Feed it to him. Thank you. And he just burp. Oh, yeah. What kind of noise does it make? Burp, burp, burp. Dang. We're, we're getting there. Look at the smoke coming off that reel. You got clear, Ben. Yeah, baby. Hey, don't be tripping over all the lane cod. Yeah. Oh, baby. It's another nice one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. You ready? Got lead. Here we go. Oh. Yes. Oh, that one's right here. Yes. Woo. We got two that kind of look like twins. Yeah. I love the yellow spots. Mm. Tommy, ooh, buddy. Hey, you can go over yeah. him and you'll be fine. You know what I mean? Go right over him. Yeah. This way. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Yes, Tommy, we have a dinosaur in the uh, infamous words from Thomas Donlin. All right, it's going to do it for us here, first half of the show on Root Sports. If you're tuning in live this evening, don't go anywhere. We're going to be back for the second half of the show right after this break. Allied 
the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied Boats will have it for you. Contact Allied Boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. All right, welcome back to the show to Wayne England. Yes, still flying solo. Tommy is not showing up tonight. So I had to give you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of recap on one of our outings with our next guest, Ben Overmars Jr. on the Overkill. That was an outing we had uh, a few seasons ago. We got into some serious sized lingcod on the deep water option. That being said, we're not quite there yet, but bottom fishing out of Westport is open. I want to introduce uh, my next guest here, Ben Overmars Jr., Overkill Sport Fishing. And uh, he is definitely uh, on the Overkill. Some, some may call you Ben Overmars, some may call you Ben Overmars Jr. Some refer to you as Captain Claw. What do you prefer? <laughs> I knew that was going to come out sooner or later. <laughs> well, it is what it is. So, hey, uh, hopefully you you uh, walked down memory lane with that little video we threw out there uh, with Tommy freaking out about that 30, 35 pound link cod. Um, that's something we get to look forward to again with you as we get out on the deep water links, which isn't open yet. So I want to throw that out there for a little teaser. But um, you are currently running bottom fish trips, which inclu include link cod and bottom fish. So, but let's talk about your setup. You're on a six pack charter. So folks who aren't accustomed to, you know, with a six pack charter, um, let's kind of describe the difference of that in an actual, uh, you know, full size, uh, large charter boat with, with lots of people. Yeah, it's a, a six pack charter is a more intimate kind of deal. Um, usually it's a group of, you know, uh, family or buddies, um, it's a faster deal. You know, we run quite a bit faster than the charter boats do, and we can be a little more um, selective. You know, we can go after, we can target black cod. We can go after lane cod. We can go after halibut. We can do all of the above. Um, it's just a little more of a personal trip, but some folks like the bigger platforms and prefer the larger charter boats. Sure. Yeah, I, uh, I for one, enjoy the, uh, the smaller group. Buddy's fishing out in your boat because we always have a great time, and you definitely get us on the fish for a, for a fun day. Um, Westport Bottom Fishing opened March 11th. Uh, you're currently running those nearshore trips. Um, what exactly is that in comparison to getting out in that deep water? You know, What kind of depth of water are we fishing? We're going after lingcod, bottom fish. What's kind of the program? Well, this is the second year that from the opener till the end of April, the, um, the line of how deep you can fish is expanded to 350 feet from 180. Mm. So there's quite a bit more opportunity, gives you a lot more rocks to fish, um, a lot more area to fish. And I have yet to fish. I start next weekend, but the boats that have been doing the inshore fishing, uh, Mark Coleman's team, All River Charters, They've been, they've been whacking on them. And then the bigger charter boats, the Slammer, Tequila, Hula Girl, they're on the fish too. Um, I saw a post from Mark the day before yesterday. He got 12 lings and one drift. 12 lings and one drift. So, you know, it's interesting. Yep. I mean, we have a pretty lucrative limit out there on our ocean fisheries. Opening up March 11th. They're open until October 31st. Uh, two ling cod per day per angler. Uh, whether it's near shore or when we go out in the deep water for those seasons when they're open. Um, but we never seem to run out of ling cod. I, talking to biologists, man, we got a pretty healthy, robust uh, population of ling cod out there in the old ocean, do we not? The ling cod fishing has absolutely been lights out the last, I mean, four or five years. Yeah. I, I have days out there where I can get my 8, 10, 12 ling cod in an hour and then spend the entire day trying to find my <laughs> rockfish. Speaking, um, speaking of which, it, so we get two ling cod and we get what, seven set of, seven we, rockfish, seven bottom fish? We get seven rockfish this year, and that includes, you know, your black your black rockfish. You can get canary rockfish. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of times when we're fishing deeper, we'll get yellowtail. Um, but we all need to be cognizant this year. And if, if you guys don't have one of these, I suggest everybody get one of these uh, colored bottom fish charts and keep it in your boat. 
starting um, in May, so May, June, and July, you can no longer retain um, quillbacks, coppers, and vermilions right. for, May, for May, June, and July this year. Right. Yeah, that identification card from WDFW is uh, something every boat should have, along with a descending device, which you're Absolutely, and, and most, folks, most folks today are using, like myself, um, we use downriggers to descend them. Right. It's much easier, much faster, and way less stress on the fish. Ben, let's talk a little bit about the gear. So we're targeting Ling Cod and kind of talk about that setup and how you go after them, using bait, jigs, whatever you're doing, you know, and, and the weight of jig head, that type of thing. And then talk a, little bit about, talk a little bit about the difference when you switch over to go after rockfish. Is there a significant change in your presentation? So, um, you know, typically, I, um, even from the, from the very start, I really enjoy live flounder fishing for lingcod. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go out and find my live flounders in the morning. Um, I'm going to catch them on squid or clam necks or a little chunk of herring. I'm going to get enough flounders for the day, you know, usually around 25, 30 flounders. You know, I think you can get three or four a person. Um, we'll get the live bait and then we'll start link cod fishing. I use like an oversized mooching leader, um, two nine odd hooks, five inches apart, um, let it down to the bottom, you know, eight, 10, 12, 16 ounces, depending on the current. Mm -hmm. And like you saw when we were out there, you just hit bottom and, slowly crank up five, six, seven cranks, wait a minute, drop it back down. And usually before you can count to seven, he's already on there. <laughs> yeah. Thereby you get uh, 12 link odds on your first drift. Yeah. They are definitely yeah. aggressive when you put, put uh, bait down in their face. So we get our link cod on the deck, throw them in the box. Now we're going to go after and target our rockfish. What, uh, what type of gear are we using? Spinning rods, bait casters, size a rod if somebody wants to go out there and do this on their own what do you recommend and the present well for the it, for this time of year for the for the march april fishery we're primarily targeting the black rock fish um i've actually mixed my my uh, program up this year and i'm going to use um i like the uh um okuma hover rods and i'm going to run three okuma hover rods with a light bait caster and I'm going to run three eight to twelve spinning rods, and I just put on you know two to three ounces of weight and run shrimp flies and different color worms, and those those rockfish really like structure, so you just start cruising around out there, and I just go from you know you mark your spots, and I go from point to point to point to point to point until you find a school and let down on them, and they usually take pretty readily. Those flies that you're using, or any soft plastics you're putting on jig heads. What colors seem to produce, and does that change as we get into later in the season? Say, you know, August, if we're out there still chasing them, get into September. Do those color patterns change at all? Is it pretty consistent throughout the entire year? I, I don't see much change in the color pattern, but on certain days, you definitely see a, a pattern. Um, especially for the black rockfish, they love that root beer, purple, black, you know, any of those darker colors. And then if you get a chance to fish out deeper, the shrimp flies start to come into play pretty well. There's a lot of shrimp out there, and especially like the yellowtails and stuff, they love the shrimp flies. Yes, they do. Uh, all right, so we, we have a successful day as we typically do with you, and all I know is when we get back to the dock, you hardly let anybody touch anything. You're just going to work, laying out all the fish, bagging everything up, dividing everything up. Is that what folks can expect when they book a charter with you, come out, get their fish, back at the dock, they're going home with a bag of of uh, clean meat isn't that right absolutely yep we uh we bleed the fish as soon as we catch them um keep them nice and chilled and then when we get in we uh we fillet all the you know boneless fillet all the fish skin them and then we bag them up individual um 99 of the time you're going to walk home with your two lane cod and your seven rockfish per person yeah that's awesome all right you have uh some openings coming up you're going to be as you said you're going to get cranking here this next weekend and then it's Definitely go time. We don't get to come out and see you till June 9th on that Friday when we go after Deepwater Lincod. But uh, as far as this nearshore stuff and what you're fishing now out to that 300 foot line, uh, you have openings. And if so, how do people get a hold of you? I um, I do have some openings in April, and the 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 March and April bottom fishing is going to stay strong. I mean, the season just got started, mm -hmm. and there's plenty of water to fish, and there's lots of opportunity. It can be really good this time of year. 
And the trips are less money than the deep water trips because you're not running as far. Sure. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm on Facebook under Ben Overmars Jr. Or you can reach me by cell at 253-224-5794. Fantastic. Yep, Facebook's a good good place to find you. Remember, it's Ben Overmars Jr. Uh, don't look for the uh, the Facebook page with Captain Claw. That's an entirely <laughs> different page and, and of its own. And by the way, nice hat. Excellent wardrobe selection. For this is my new fishing hat. I will be sporting this all season. That is fantastic. We appreciate that support. And we will we will see you soon, my friend. Well, you know, June, but uh, who knows? May jump out there for this nearshore stuff if I get a free day here just to come bother you. So appreciate you jumping on tonight, Ben. Well, we know, pleasure, buddy. Uh, nice talking with you guys. Let me know if you get a day off and we'll get out there. Got it. All right. Ben Overmars Jr. Uh, on the Overkill. Overkill Sport Fishing. Look him up either by name or Overkill Sports Fishing Facebook page on the, well, Facebook. And uh, definitely book a day with him. Again, you don't have to go with a, a large charter out there. You're going to be five or six buddies, family, what have you, jumping on Ben's boat. And he will absolutely give you a fantastic day and more than likely gonna get your limits of fish. The guy is just very consistent out there on the ocean. All right, we're gonna jump out for a quick break, come back, wrap up a few things here, a few reminders and things you need to pay attention to before we get through the end of this month. Don't go anywhere, quick break. We'll be back right here, Fish on Northwest. All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in the studio. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Ben is a, uh, a good friend and a phenomenal captain out there on the ocean. Okay, moving forward here, a couple of reminders before we get out of here. Uh, hey, hunters, pay attention. Multi-season uh, applications are due by March 31st, and if you're dragging your feet on this, you're going to miss out. Excellent opportunity. Uh, typically, any of your special hunts or your multi-season tags run you about $6.50 or $6.60 to submit the application. Now, if you get drawn on any of these, you can choose to uh, purchase that license then uh, as you roll into your season, or you can let it go and you're going you're gonna to just continue to accumulate points. Um, one thing that you uh, uh, may be confused about, some folks are, there is a difference between multi-season tag and special hunt, okay? And so one thing you can do is uh, for clarification, go to the WDFW YouTube page. Yes, WDFW has a YouTube page. And uh, type in Ted Sandbar. And uh, this is some educational information. If you're unfamiliar with the process, Ted Sandbar, it's uh, some quasi-entertaining, a little bit of a, go a goofy spin on it. But nonetheless, very descriptive videos. Uh, Ted's going to walk you through the differences between multi-season submission and uh, special hunt permit submission and what the differences are and why you should do that. You know, for deer alone here in Washington, hunting both east and west side throughout the season in multiple options with your weapon choice, because um, you don't have to declare a single weapon if you get a multi-season tag, you're hunting about 140 days 
uh, about 140 day option or so. I'll go back and do the math again, but I figured it out one time. It's really a pretty lengthy season that you can take full advantage of. So something to think about, uh, multi-season tags and of course, uh, special hunt permits, all right? Uh, don't let that one pass you by. March 31st is the deadline. Uh, with that also, North of Falcon process continues. If you guys are following this, great. If you're not, and you've been trying to uh, figure out where to, you know, maybe take in a meeting and pay attention to what's going on, it's really very simple. Uh, as an example, yesterday was North of Falcon 1, which was the statewide proposal basically running through a lot of the information on as they're setting seasons and some options that they're throwing out there on the table that they're going to meet with co-managers and try to decide how they draft or craft the seasons uh, ahead this coming fall. Um, some things to pay attention to if you're an ocean fisher, uh, March 20th will be a public meeting for, for the ocean opportunities. March 21st, Columbia River, and also there's a separate meeting that day as well for Willapa. Uh, March 22nd will be Grays Harbor Fisheries Discussions. They're going to throw the different options out there. They take the numbers, pump them into the models, and start, you know, trying to decide which fisheries we can do without over harvesting and having impacts on or over impacts on our wild fish uh, escapement needs. And March 23rd is going to be Puget Sound. And, and also along with Puget Sound, the freshwater sports or recreational opportunities. So there's a lot of information coming over the next week and a half. Where do you go to find all this information or how do I find the schedule? Go to type in your search bar. Okay, just go to your search bar, type in WDFW or just yeah, WDFW North of Falcon Public Meetings 2023. And that will populate, schedule comes up, you click on that, you can scroll down, every single meeting is boxed on a drop menu. And so if you have a specific type of fishery you're looking for, a certain region in the state, whether it's freshwater, saltwater, um, ocean versus Puget Sound, Columbia River, all the meetings are listed there. Now, you. You know, some of them you still have the option to go now because we're back to public meetings. You can go sit in on those, but it's extremely convenient to also just get on your computer, even when you're at work, just have a plane off to the side, you know, so hopefully the boss don't care. But you can listen in on those meetings and look at the, the presentations they put up there with all the graphs and everything, showing you the seasons that you can uh, hopefully count on as we move into the fall. And it's kind of nice to get early indications of how these seasons are shaping up, you might want to start making plans to, you know, go fish buoy 10 or, um, you know, mid, midway up on the Columbia, even head to the east side when those fisheries are going to be uh, cranking over there. You got to make plans to go do that, places to stay, places to camp, where am I going to launch the boat, try new fisheries, don't always keep chasing after the same old fishery because let's face it, some of our fisheries are here and gone. Some of them we look forward to and then you know, there's nothing. Much like our winter blackmouth fishing here in March. They opened it. It was open for six or seven days, closed it down. Thought we were going to get, well, excuse me, in February. Thought we were going to get another opportunity here in March, but it's closed completely. So that one went away with uh, no recourse on that. So, you know, these meetings are informative. It's kind of nice to see as they put them together, the information, and you can start making plans uh, rolling into the fall on some of your destinations and fisheries you want to take advantage of. So, all right, uh, that is pretty much going to do it for us this week, albeit a little bit shorter of a show this evening, no problem. Uh, we got the information out that I wanted to uh, put together this week. I want to thank all our guests, uh, Dirk Durham, the bugler himself from Phelps Game Calls, uh, Patrick Gaffney with Harbor Herring and, and Gaffney's Guide Service, and, of course, uh, Ben Overmars Jr. on the Overkill. Look him up on Facebook. Uh, all three of those gentlemen are fantastic uh, individuals, wealth of knowledge. And if you missed any of it, you can go back, check out the, uh, the program either on Facebook or YouTube and uh, get caught up on all the insightful content they provided this evening. All right, that'll do it for us this week here in the studio, or do it for me <laughs> this week in the studio. Uh, should be back next week. I believe Tommy is still out, but I got some guests lining up that are going to come join us here in studio finally. Looking forward to that. So have a great weekend. Get out there, dig those clams. Weather's going to be fantastic. Get the kids out and enjoy. We'll see you next Thursday right here, Fish on Northwest.